Hey guys, welcome back to Mayfield Family Farm. I'm going to pre-warn you that the video you're going to see today is going to be a little bit graphic. So um, if you don't like that sort of thing, I would encourage you to turn away. Um, so oh, last week, one of our chickens um, came missing and we realized that the only predators out here that would get one of our chickens would either be a hawk or a coyote. Um, I know that we have a couple hawks that um, live up in these trees and a couple weeks ago, um, actually the, the same week that our chicken went missing, there was one hawk up here screeching and another hawk out here screeching and one flew all the way back here and they were making a lot of screeching and that was like on a Monday and then on um, by Wednesday our chicken went missing and it sucks because it was Little Red who is our, um, she's the same chicken that you've seen probably in the video where we uh, took care of her when she got attacked by a raccoon and got the back of her neck ripped open and uh, so we had to bring her in the house. She had another situation a little bit later than that where she got an infection, a respiratory infection to where we had to give her some antibiotics. Also bring her in the house for a week and have her live in a tub where we had to hand feed her. So she was just the most adorable chicken. She would come right up to us anytime we were out back doing anything, she'd be right at our feet uh, checking us out. We'd be petting her and she'd walk off. Well, she um, disappeared and made our family very, very sad and devastated for losing, losing her almost as a pet. Um, so I decided to walk our perimeter and we found three different areas along our fence on our property where there was uh, areas where an animal could get underneath. So if it wasn't the hawk, I knew it would have been a coyote coming through. So I went online uh, on YouTube and I'll probably link to a couple of the videos that I found of creating some snare traps. And I've never had any experience in trapping, um, but I've also been learning a lot of skills for uh, survival and for uh, that sort of thing for going out, um, living off the land, that sort of thing, learning how to you know, create fires and set traps and hunt and fish and everything like that when you don't have full resources. And so I thought it was a great skill to learn and also something here to practice. Uh, with the trap, I also figured that we might be able to get a raccoon or anything else like that that could be hurting our animals. So I'm gonna show you um, where a couple of the traps are set up and then show you what we, uh, what we were able to wrangle this time. So over in this corner is one of the traps and uh, you can see the snare trap right here. It's uh, right there with the carabiner. It comes down and then right there is a penny. Um, the penny is actually the locking mechanism and then you can see the cable go right around there. Um, I've placed sticks all right here and all over here vertical. Actually my mother did um, back when she was visiting um, in town last year. And so there was just this little open space right here between the sticks that had been knocked out. So I figured a coyote um, was coming through here. So I set a trap there. And uh, again, we, have, we knew that there was animals coming through there because it was all brushed away and all those sticks were pushed in. So it meant some sort of animal had been pushing its way through. Um, over in the other corner of our yard, um, our property is about an acre large. So we're about 100 foot wide by 400 foot long. So uh, on the other side over here, 100 foot away, the other corner, um, I've set another snare trap. This one is, um, it's looped around this wire here and then you can see the loop there. This one's moved a little bit. I had used some grass here to tie it to keep this portion back like this to where the only point of entry would be through the trap. I knew this wasn't big enough for a coyote, um, but perhaps um, a raccoon or something. And then there was one other trap that was, uh, about 20 foot from here. And again, this is gonna be the more graphic area. It might be disturbing. So I'm gonna give you guys a break. I'll even um, pan to a page right now, the screen that says, um, viewer discretion is advised. So look away if you don't wanna see this. But we did trap a, uh, a coyote. So here's the coyote we um, caught. And yes, he is dead. Um, and so this one was right here, you can see the opening here in the fence. Um, so I had set the carabiner here with the trap um, and he has wound himself up pretty tight and is dead. Um, this had to have happened within the last 24 hours. Um, state law, uh, just so you guys understand, uh, the law um, is in Texas, you can set any sort of trap on your own property um, for animals like this. And, uh, but you, without a hunting license, but you have to check the traps every 36 hours. So um, I set these traps 
I want to say over the weekend. Today is uh, Thursday, so I've had them out for four, four to six days, and uh, have been checking them um, every morning. I come out and check them. Uh, I had an appointment this morning, so right now it's about one o'clock, and uh, that's when I came out and found this coyote. Uh, so he was probably in there sometime um, dawn this morning to dusk last night, or sometime through the night. Um, it feels good because I know that 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 coyote represents another one of our animals. It represents um, one or two of our chickens, our duck, um, injury to our goats, injuries you know to our pig. So I felt that this was an appropriate measure. Um, the other alternative was to be sitting out here uh, all throughout the night with a rifle and trying to you know see what one comes in um, and shoot it, uh, rifle or uh, bow and arrow. But that just didn't seem uh, logistically appropriate, so I felt this was the best method. Um, it's not as humane, I get that, um, but at the same time, I have a duty to protect our animals, just like I have a duty to protect our family. And so this was the uh, method that seemed the most appropriate. But at the same time, I think it's awesome that using a primitive technique such as a snare trap, um, first time ever doing something like this, just watching videos on YouTube about how to set traps, where to set them, how to figure out where animals are coming through and, and what seems more logical for how an animal thinks. And uh, for the first time doing this within, like I said, less than a week, uh, catching a predator that was uh, coming to harm one of our animals, I think is an amazing success and I feel really good and uh, really excited. So again, thank you for visiting our Mayfield Family Farm page. I know this isn't the typical post about how to farm, but this pred predation is a, uh, uh, definitely a part of survival, a part of self-reliance, a part of farming, uh, backyard farming, any form, because that's one of the things we have as a duty is to protect the animals and the feed and the food that we are growing and uh, using for our own family. So uh, thank you guys for checking out and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Here is the snare, um, again with the carabiner, <laughs> 511 tactical carabiner. I think came with a um, pair of pants or maybe a bag or something I got at one point. Um, but it's been wound up a lot. Uh, one thing I didn't do on this one um, that I need to upgrade and update on all my snares is doing a swivel mount um, so that this doesn't happen so they don't swivel themselves up. Um, makes it really difficult to undo to get off. Um, down here you can see the penny that's bent at a 90 degree with um, two holes drilled in it. I'll, uh, like I said, I'll link to a video to show how to make these snares and also show a couple pictures of the ones that I made. I'll pull um, some of the ones off that I already set to show you what they look like. Um, but this one I did have to just uh, cut off because it was too wound to be able to loosen it with the penny. So that's what the uh, snare looks like afterwards. And as you can see, this was a very large coyote, uh, especially larger than the ones I'm used to in Arizona. This one weighed over 28 pounds. All right, so I just want to show you quickly the snare. This is not a how-to video of uh, creating a snare. Like I said, I will link to that below in the description um, for the specifics on how to make it. But this one, I just want to show you the functions of it. So this is the one that we used that all got uh, wound up to catch the coyote. And this one here, I just pulled out the fence uh, just to demonstrate how it works. So it's just using one sixteenth inch uh, braided stainless steel cable and a couple ferrules and stops. So basically just a ferrule here on the end where I create a loop. Um, and that way I can wrap it around a branch, um, wrap it through itself, or I can use a carabiner uh, or a swivel mount or however I want to use to attach this. Uh, I can also attach this to a spring load if I have it hooked up to a tree branch, um, a limb or a, a little sapling tree if I wanted to catch uh, squirrels or rabbits for eating. Um, which was a primary purpose of me building these. I actually built these a few weeks ago, uh, maybe a month or so ago, with the kids as a idea just to keep in my uh, bag uh, so when I'm out camping or getting a survival situation I would have prepared. Since I had them, uh, when we found out that the chicken was killed, I realized, hey, this would be a great opportunity to try them. Was not realizing that it would uh, work on a coyote. Um, didn't think I would be that successful uh, first time out, but I was. And as you see, you'll see in the video of how to make these, basically use a penny. Uh, we use pennies that are from 1981 or before just because they are 95% uh, copper, where the new ones are um, not full copper, so they will break when you fold them or bend them. So you bend this at a 90 degree and you drill a um, hole there and then a hole on the top, and uh, that actually becomes the break. So when, you, uh, when the animal goes through the loop and this begins to tighten around their neck, it will actually 
um, lock, uh, the penny caused it to lock so it won't loosen so the animal can't back out of it. And uh, that's what makes the trap so successful is once an animal is in, if they are uh, moving forward or backwards or tug on anything, it will tighten up around them and uh, not let go. So just again, wanted to show you a little demonstration of how the uh, traps work. Um, and if you notice, the, the stainless steel cable and even penny and everything is not very shiny. Uh, in the video about how to build them, you'll see that when you make these, you boil them in water with a little bit of baking soda. And the purpose of that is to remove all the oil that is on the uh, cable. Pulls the oil off so the animals, uh, predators and stuff can't smell it. And it also causes it to get real dingy and uh, not be as shiny. So. There you have it. Again, thank you guys for visiting our uh, farm page and we'll see you guys soon.